Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey guys, what's up? Me, Jim, and you're back to another reaction video. All right, we're doing another Kings and Generals video, uh, Caesar and Gaelic Wars, um, War of the Roses videos over on Kings and General. Only has two more episodes. I want to start the Hundred Years War series, and uh, I think I, I think I can do this one as well. Uh, very interested in this. Um, I'm going to really want to pay attention. Anything I get wrong or questions I ask, which is going to be a lot. Uh, you guys are great at giving me some good answers. So yeah, that see the main goal of this channel is, I would say, to make a community where we can hang out and talk about history, watch history videos. Oh, Discord, get on the Discord. I'm gonna have the Discord link to the stuff down in the uh, description, the top of it. Um, it's just gonna be so easier for me to even if like I'm not on YouTube, I'm like playing a game or. Or doing something else on uh, the computer. You're going to make a joke about that. Uh, and uh, so yeah, it's just much easier than the YouTube comments to like see what you guys want me to react to. And just talk about history more kind of fluently throughout the day. Um, rather than just when I see them down in the comments. And uh, so yeah, that's a main part of my channel. But also is... Almost as equally important to me is I'm really eager to fill my gaps of knowledge, which there are many. Believe it or not, yes, shocker. I graduated four year with a four-year degree in history, a BA in history. I know that's uh, hard to believe, and I can't believe I did as well. I feel like I am in no way a historian. I feel like I don't know mu as much about history as I should. I'm even not really a master in any certain area of history. So my other goal is to really just learn more about history. I do find it fascinating and I want to learn more. So I, I'm going to really pay attention to this. And yeah, let's do it. I don't know if I already said this already. If you're not subscribed, you want to come on my journey to do that stuff and hang out, hit the subscribe button, pull up a chair. We'll be nice. Most of us. And uh, we'd love to have you. The more the merrier. Let's do it. Let's go. Always make sure to support Kings and Generals. They do the hard part. I'm just reacting to it. Great channel. The Gauls were one of Rome's oldest and most bitter enemies. They had sacked Rome and throughout the centuries fought alongside the Republic's most dangerous adversaries, including Pyrrhus and Hannibal. By the end of the second century BC, Southern Gaul was largely subdued. However, there was still tension in Northern Gaul. See, hold on and throughout the centuries oldest and most bitter enemies. They had sacked Rome and throughout the centuries fought alongside the Republic's most dangerous adversaries, including Pyrrhus and Hannibal. By the end of the second century BC, Southern Gaul was largely subdued. However, there was still tension in Northern Gaul, particularly along the Rhine. These tensions would ultimately climax in the Gallic Wars, the conflict that would shape the future of Western Europe for centuries to come, giving rise to the Holy Roman Empire and modern-day France, the conflict that would forever etch the name Gaius Julius Caesar in the annals of history. But before we start our video, we would like I wish I had a new sponsor. web of factors as a platform Get to the money, dude. the link Get in the description of the Civil can. War. Rome had been rocked by almost half a century of civil wars, and the Republic was in decline. Sorry, Both I just, I, and I gotta make sure it's recording and everything. Recording, good volume, good, sorry. Had Go. decline. Who does these animations? Both Marius and Sulla had marched on Rome, highlighting the ineffectiveness of the system for maintaining a large empire and the fact that the legionaries were more loyal to their generals than to the state. The Following this chaotic period, three men had established an unofficial alliance to effectively control the Republic. This was the first triumvirate, consisting of the famous general Pompey the Great, the richest man in Rome, Crassus, and Julius Caesar. Caesar had been consul the year before in 59 BC, but his political campaigning has left him in debt and made him many enemies in Rome. He needed to make money fast and gain enough military success to keep his political adversaries at bay. 
When the time came for distributing provinces for Caesar to govern as proconsul, he was able to use his political allies to secure Cisalpine Gaul, Illyricum, and Transalpine Gaul for an unprecedented five years. Where is Illyrica? He was able to use his political oh, allies to secure Cisalpine Gaul, Illyricum, and okay. Transalpine Gaul for an unprecedented five years. This put Caesar in control of four veteran legions, the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th, is a good channel. all of whom had fought with Caesar before in Hispania and were loyal to him. They had a total of roughly 22,000 legionaries, plus auxiliaries. Caesar now had the men he needed. All he needed was an excuse for war. Fortunately for Caesar, a Celtic tribe, the Helvetii, was planning a migration into Gaul in 58 BC. After all, I would, uh, I'd love for you guys to check out my Napoleonic War series uh, reactions. The ser not my series, Epic History TV's Napoleonic War series, which I've reacted to. I'm sort of a big uh, Napoleon lover now. Suche, uh, Napoleon lover now. I know just as little about Caesar as I did at the beginning, maybe even slightly less than I did about Napoleon at the beginning of those videos. Let's see if uh, I can become a big Caesar fan as well. BC. Their leader was planning a migration into Gaul in 50. A Celtic tribe, the Helvetii, was planning a migration into Gaul in 58 BC. Their leader, Oregtorix, had formed a confederation with a number of neighboring tribes, the Tolingi, Latubrigi, Rauraki, and Boii, and now they numbered 368,000 men, women, and children. Oregtorix had even convinced them all to burn their homes in order to leave no option of failure. However, soon he was accused of being a tyrant what? and... So he had the soldiers homes burned so that they have no reason to go back isn't that kind of what most soldiers are fighting for like the idea that you're fighting to protect your family and your home how would that i mean he he's being called a tyrant now but that's and was forced to commit suicide well if you're forced to commit suicide then Command is it suicide Divico was determined to stick to the plan I have to show and that. began amassing supplies in order to start pouring into Gaul. To do this, they would either have to pass through the land of the Roman ally Edui and the province of Transalpine Gaul, or take the longer route through the mountain passes in the north. The Romans had built up a healthy fear of migrating tribes following the Cimbrian War in 113 to 101 BC, and so Caesar, hearing of this, was only too willing to come to the rescue of the Edui. If anyone knows who does these animations, uh, let me know, please. He took the only available legion in the area and force marched them up to Geneva, destroying the bridge on the Rhone that provided access into Transalpine Gaul. The Helvetii appealed to Caesar, asking for military access through Roman lands and promising they would not attack. Caesar played for time, pretending to consider this offer for almost 15 days. Using this time, his legion was able to construct a fortified embankment almost 5 meters high, stretching 20 miles along the riverbank. With the legion manning the embankment and now in a stronger Hey, uh, can we pass through here? Yeah, just, I gotta think it over. Just a sec, just a sec. Uh, we, we see your, your engineers are building a, a big wall. Yeah, just a sec, I just gotta, I gotta decide, uh, just for a sec. Okay, no, the answer's no. Uh. <laughs> the position, Caesar denied the Helvetii access and refused to allow them to cross. Some of the Helvetii ignored this and attempted to cross nonetheless in- Why didn't they attempt to cross before they finished the wall? Small ...boats, but were prevented from doing so by the legionaries throwing javelins and shooting arrows into them. With the southern route thus blocked, the Helvetii decided to take the longer northern route through the mountains into Gaul. Leaving his top lieutenant, Labienus, in command, Caesar returned to Italy to levy a further two legions and to- Okay, so Gaul, is is all of this Gaul? I, I don't... 
So all of this. Now you know how little I know about this topic. Don't, please don't scream at me. Just teach me. Pull the other three veteran legions out of their winter quarters in Aquileia, bringing his total to approximately 33,000 so legionaries plus auxiliaries. Despite Labienus being in a strong position to easily block the mountain pass, the Helvetii managed to push into Gallic territories and began ravaging the land. The Gauls pleaded with Caesar to intervene and chase the Helvetii out, and Caesar, yet again, was only too willing to help, marching his legions into the Gallic territories. The decision of Labienus to not hold the Helvetii in the mountains was likely an order received from Caesar. The Celts were now in open terrain, which better suited the Roman legions, and their pillaging of Gaul gave Caesar an excuse to and intervene. Word reached Caesar that the Helvetii were currently attempting- I wonder if this ever happened. I wonder if- not just in this war, but any time, it probably has, where, like, you just have a bunch of your soldiers dress up like people, like the Gauls are your enemy, like, perfectly, and act like him, and maybe even kind of speak like him, um, and then go into, like, villages around an area that you think might be a conflict, and just kind of, like, pillage and stuff, and then everyone thinks that, that you're the good guys now, because they think they're... No, no. ...a crossing at the Ara River. They had been crossing in four large groups, using many rafts and boats, but due to the size of the horde and their lack of organization, the crossing had already taken them days, and one group was still yet to cross. Caesar took his legions so cool and... so cool how swiftly... much geography and terrain affects uh, battle and troop movement. ...marched to the river. Caesar took his legions and swiftly marched to the river. Quickly forming his legions into battle formation, Caesar fell upon the Celts waiting to cross. Caught unaware, unprepared, and encumbered by their baggage, the Helvetii did not even have enough time to form a proper battle line. The fighting was over quickly, with the whole stranded group being killed or fleeing into the nearby woods, whilst the other three groups could do nothing but watch helplessly from the other side of the river. The main Helvetii force began to move on, and not wanting to lose the initiative, Caesar quickly built a bridge across the river and moved all of his six legions across. The crossing that had taken the Celts 20 days had taken the Romans just one. Guys, we should play one of those games like uh, Age of Empires or something. Isn't it like Hearts of Iron or something? I would crush you guys. I don't know how to play them, but I think I played Age of Empires like two way back in the day. Caesar began tailing the Helvetii, waiting for the right time to strike. There were a few minor cavalry skirmishes, but nothing decisive. Caesar did once manage to find a battlefield that was advantageous, and even had Labienus in position behind the enemy. However, due to poor communication from his scouts, Caesar was forced to pull back from the battlefield. This caused a delay in Caesar's plan of the enemy. However, due to poor communication from his scouts, Caesar was forced to pull back from the battlefield. This caused a delay in Caesar's plan, and he was beginning to run low on rations. He decided to head for the nearby town of Bibracta to resupply his army before continuing the pursuit. As he began to march off, however, Divico gave chase, harassing the rear of the Roman army. Caesar sent his cavalry and light infantry to fight a delaying action in order to buy time to deploy his main force on a nearby hill. The four veteran legions formed three lines at the front, with the two newly levied legions, along with the auxiliaries, positioned further up the hill. These men were not tested in battle, and so were not expected to do any of the fighting. Instead, they were to guard the baggage and were not expected to do any of the fighting. Instead, they were to guard the baggage and were spread thin across the hill to seemingly increase the size of Caesar's army. 
The Helvetii, numbering somewhere between 60 to 90,000 warriors, had successfully fought off the Roman cavalry and light infantry, forcing them to retreat. Now they had formed... So if you're a greater army, more numerous army, you know, a number advantage, then you want to do the opposite, like um, stretch your army thinly, like uh, not many columns, but a lot of rows so that you it looks like you're deceivingly small yeah their infantry into a tightly packed 90,000 warriors had successfully fought off the roman cavalry and light infantry forcing them to retreat how many they fought off the roman cavalry between 60 to 90,000 warriors wow. and advanced on the romans Jesus. formed their infantry into a tightly packed shield wall and advanced on the romans the front two lines of legionaries opened the battle with a volley of javelins. These hampered the Helvetii by becoming stuck in their shields, forcing them to drop them and break into a looser formation. With the shield wall in disarray, the Roman front lines charged into melee. The fighting was intense and tough, but the Romans' discipline and experience gave them the edge. Slowly, they began to get the upper hand, with the Helvetii being forced back to a nearby mountain. However, as the Romans pressed up the mountain, a portion of the Helvetii allies, composed of Boii and Tilingi, roughly 15,000 warriors, entered the battle. These men had been acting as a rearguard, protecting the camp, and now they- Is it just me, or does this seem like a lot of troops? More than I would have expected for- and earlier on, like I thought like the Napoleonic Wars numbers would just dwarf these. I'm not saying they don't, but like even more. They fell on the Roman flank, threatening to encircle them. The Helvetii, bolstered by the arrival of their allies, began pushing back with renewed vigor. And they have the high ground. With the two front lines of legionaries already engaging the Helvetii on the mountain, Caesar committed his final line of veterans, which had been acting as a reserve. After hours of hard fighting, the Helvetii on the mountain were eventually broken and forced from the battle. However, the Boii and Tilingi fell back to the camp to make a last stand. Using their baggage wagons, they formed a makeshift rampart and continued the fight, hurling missiles down into the Roman ranks. This is where the fighting was the most difficult, as the Boii were famed warriors and fought desperately. Finally, after fighting long into the night, the third line was able to break into the camp, ending the battle. The battle had lasted almost 12 hours. Caesar had lost perhaps 5,000 men, whilst the Helvetii had lost around 40 to 60,000. Of the 368,000 people who began the migration, only 130,000 were now left. Caesar, with no cavalry left and people, and four who began to 60,000, 5,000 men, whilst the Helvetii had lost around 40 to 60,000. 5,000 battle had lasted almost 12 hours. Caesar had lost perhaps 5,000 men, whilst the Helvetii had lost around 40 to 60,000. What? I mean, I guess they won in the end, and so they ended up just slaughtering the rest. Did they take any prisoners? Maybe the prisoners are... 168,000 people who began the mic. 60,000 men, almost 12 hours. Caesar had lost perhaps 5,000 men, whilst the Helvetii had lost around 40 to 60,000. casualties 60, or death? Of the 368,000 people who began the migration, only 130,000 were now left. Caesar, with no cavalry to speak of, was not able to give chase immediately, and gave his men three days in order to recover from the battle before starting the pursuit. The Helvetii, seeing the Romans chasing them once more, surrendered completely and were forced to return to their homeland and made a vassal of Rome, acting as a buffer between Roman and Germanic lands. Caesar had achieved his aim of gaining a swift... So is Gaul... I don't care if I sound like an idiot, I have a serious question. Is Gaul like the land... Is it one of these that I'm not just not seeing? Is it just the land that is squished? 
in between the Germanic peoples and the Romans? Are they the French? I military victory and for now he would be able to hold off his political enemies in Rome furthermore when the was Romans Caesar born shown... 100 uh, BC okay when was this 58 BC so that, that means he's 42 okay 41 42 themselves to be a powerful force in the Gallic theater. After his victory, Caesar rested in Bibracte for a short time before moving on. Rumor had already reached him of a Germanic tribe that had crossed the Rhine and was terrorizing Gaul. The Gallic Wars were just starting. And in our future videos, we will talk more about them. So make sure you are subscribed to our channel and have pressed the bell button. Oh, I am. We would Ooh, like to I? express our gratitude to our Patreon supporters. Thank you, Patreons. I express my gratitude to all of you and Kings in general, especially. Subscribe. Join the Discord. Link at the top. Love you guys. See you guys next time. And channel members who make...